Good evening, Loopsters. This is Margaret, otherwise known as Athens Newbie. And tonight I'm going to show you how to make a really amazing pizza known as a loaded baked potato pizza. This is my version of what a local restaurant, Stevie B's, does. Now these are going to be all of your ingredients. Okay, obviously you have cheese. I use two types. I use mozzarella and cheddar. You're going to use a mixture of ranch and sour cream as basically your base, as your pizza sauce. Bacon, I like turkey bacon, personal preference. Some chives that are going to also be in your sauce. Green onions on top. And then I have two different types of potatoes here, just simply because I didn't have enough of one, so we got another type. Then a little bit of butter. And your pizza dough, which I'll show you on a different night how to make that tonight. We're just going to use the rest of what I uh, started last night. Alright, first thing you're going to want to do is obviously you're going to want to wash your potatoes and give them a really good scrubbing to get any dirt off of them. And then you're going to slice them in relatively thin slices. Now, I happen to like to use a small, uh, straight uh, bladed knife. You want to sharpen it before you use it, obviously, and have clean hands. And then, you see I'm literally just making them about uh, yeah, eight to a quarter inch thick. Okay, so while uh, I was slicing up the potatoes, we had some butter, uh, just one tablespoon, heating up in the pan on medium to medium-low heat. I've also got the oven preheating to 400 degrees. So now I'm just going to place my potatoes in the pan, and basically you're going to pre-cook them and give them a nice little bit of crispness. I like to do a single layer. Okay, so while my potatoes are slowly browning, um, I'm going to basically prep my pan and go ahead and roll out my dough. Now, regarding the pan, I personally love this. This is a pizza stone, and it just seems to add a little bit of uh, moisture to the dough or any sort of bread. I just love it personally. Uh, you can use a regular pizza pan or even just a baking sheet. And you want to sprinkle whatever sheet it is with some flour so that the dough is not going to stick. Alright, so the dough that you use, you can use either, um, you can cheat and buy some of the bobbly, uh pre-made doughs, or you can use a Pillsbury, one that you buy uh, in a can, or get some of the Martha White or Pillsbury uh, ready-made pizza mixes. I made this one from scratch, and if enough of you want to know how I can show you on a different day. But basically, you're going to take your pizza dough, pop it out on the pan. Alright, so I've put a little bit of dough on both sides, or sorry, flour on both sides of the dough. And while you may think it's really odd that somebody who cooks and bakes as much as I do doesn't have a rolling pin, I don't. So I'm actually going to use a to-go coffee cup. It's smooth on, on all sides and it actually works really well. It can take being pressed on pretty well. Water bottles, to-go coffee cups, whatever you can use. And just like anything, you're just going to start at the center and kind of roll it out. Now that you've got your dough rolled out, it's not going to be perfect as you can see. It's never going to look exactly like it does in a restaurant. Now if you like a little bit of a crust on your pizza, what I like to do is actually kind of just roll up the edges a little bit. And just do that all the way around to create kind of a thicker area that will end up being your crust. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the crust rolled all the way around. And here's a little tip. If you want to make a stuffed crust pizza, it's so easy. Buy some of those little uh, string mozzarella uh, pieces, tear them into four pieces, and you roll them into the dough as you roll in the crust up. Then when you bake it, it'll turn into a stuffed crust pizza. Perfect. Okay, so to finish preparing your dough, you're basically going to use your fork to kind of press down where you created a crust all the way around, and that actually comes into play later on with the baking process. And creates a very important barrier. Right. So now that you have uh, this pressed down all the way around, you're going to do one of my favorite parts, which is aerated. Okay, now that you've got your crust well aerated for lack of a better term. This actually allows the heat to rise up through the dough without causing it all to rise up like bread would. Basically at this point you're going to stick this in the oven for about five minutes to just kind of give it a really quick pre-cook. Okay, so while our potatoes are cooking and our dough's in the oven for a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and make the base of the sauce, which would normally be a tomato sauce, but today we're going to do a mixture of sour cream and ranch dressing. Now, like I said, 
this is kind of a made up recipe, so I don't really have a mountain to put in. I'm just kind of putting, I guess it would be about a quarter to a third of a cup of sour cream. And then a good healthy squirt of ranch. And so basically, once you've got it in there, it's going to look something like that. And you're just going to mix it together. It's going to give your sour cream a little bit more flavor than it would by itself. And the sour cream gives the texture a really rich flavor. All right, so I'm finishing up the last little bit of the potatoes. And as you can see, they have a nice brown color to them, just a little bit. That's why I like the butters, because, well, heck, I mean, if you're going to have a baked potato, you may as well have butter and sour cream and bacon and cheese on it. So basically, we're just representing that in a pizza. But rather than being done with the pan, now that I've finished the potatoes, I'm going to go ahead and start the bacon. So while the bacon's uh, cooking, you're going to go ahead and slice up your green onion. Once again, using the same knife you did the potatoes. And the greatest thing is when you have a sharp knife, you don't have to press down. You just gently slide back and forth. You have fewer accidents in the kitchen if you have a sharp knife as opposed to a dull one. Okay. So once again, while everything's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and make some chai, um, chop up my chai. Now these are kind of on the edge of going bad, so I'm going to basically pick and choose different pieces. And I might be cutting off stems, etc., etc. So basically, you're just going to chop these up and add them to your sour cream and ranch mixture. Okay, so my bacon's actually done cooking. I've just set, taken it off the stove and set it aside so it can drain off some of the excess grease. And I've already added my chives into my base mixture. And now I'm just going to put it on the pizza. Now, if you'll remember, I mentioned earlier that it's very important to keep those little ridges from the forks. You're going to actually push your base up to that point, but not over those ridges. Okay, I'm ready to begin actually topping my pizza now. And I like to actually start with a little layer of just plain old everyday mozzarella cheese. Just kind of a light sprinkling over the top. And if you notice, some of my cheese is actually going into the ridges, and that's great. Because this is actually what will hold your toppings on when you're eating your pizza. So as you can see, I've actually put the cheese almost all the way up to the edge of the crust. The little ridges that I left with the fork, you're going to push your cheese up all the way over there. This is going to actually anchor your toppings on, so that way when you go to take a bite out of it, everything doesn't just slide off. So never put your sauce all the way to the edge of the crust. Stop a little bit in inwards and put the cheese up just above that. Alright, so now we're just going to start layering our toppings on, and that's literally all we're doing is just putting as much or as little in the way of potatoes and bacon and cheese and, you know, fat and carbs on there as you want. Uh, I am using actually a light dressing and a light sour cream, although it seems a little moot since I'm fried everything in butter, but heck, it makes it even better. Now you're just going to put it in your oven as preheated to 400 degrees and you're going to bake it for 20 minutes. Alright, so it's been 20 minutes. The buzzer just went off. And let me tell you, I've got the smell of mm, dough, bacon, onions, and cheese. It comes out hot, it's bubbling up, and it looks delicious. 
So basically I'm going to give it about five minutes in order to cool down enough to be able to cut and eat. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. And now we're just going to slice up our pizza into eight somewhat equal pieces. <laughs> and then enjoy it. And hope that you will do the same. And use a similar recipe for many years to come.